Welcome to Kamiri Touch Media, our channel that will be talking about transformation, which is economic, political, social transformation in our country. We also want to hear views of people, especially issues that affect their daily lives. Your host will always be Jeroya Kamiri. Thank you so much. Years after independence, our leaders have promised us to take to, to take Kenyans to Kana. Unfortunately, Kenyans are still stuck in the wilderness. In issues facing them like health, food security, infrastructure, poverty levels, and uh, generally a bad economic uh, situation. Now. Uh, we should actually reflect much more on our health matters because health is everything for our country. When we go to hospitals and we find that there are no drugs or the doctors are on strike and or the nurses are not there, other me medics are not there, it does not make sense to a country that has been independent for such a long period of time. Then we should also look critically at the issues that uh, affect us as individuals. For example, unemployment rate, uh, um, closure of businesses due to day-to-day -day problems, and many other issues that face us on a daily basis. Our leadership should consider many things when they are formulating economic policies. They should consider that Job uh, uh, businesses. Much. Today is 30th of December, and I am at the J JM Memorial Hospital. This is a hospital that has been here for the last five decades, so it was built in the early 70s and um, renovated and actually opened by the late Josiah Mwangi Karioki, former Nyandaro North MP. Now, this hospital uh, has had its fair share of successes and also some failures. And why I'm covering this hospital at the end of the year is because we want changes established by the, by the political class in this country. Our county receives a lot of money for catering for the health. But it seems that there has always been a problem because there are so many complaints that come out of this hospital. The hospital is at my background and I know we cannot be allowed to enter and take videos inside because of the privacy and, uh, and uh, of course the hospital management knows that there has been a problem. So we'll go around the fence as we talk about this hospital. Thank you. Well, it's a windy day today and maybe the sound may not be very clear but um, as a matter of fact the problem is that uh, so many cases of medical negligence have been reported in the hospital we have lost many lives and i think the county government has not been very serious in addressing the issues that have taken place in this hospital in july this year we lost a lady fidelis karibi who had come to deliver in this hospital and uh, actually I was the chairman of the funeral committee. So basically we could not get the clear information of what had happened in the hospital. Generally, uh, when we talked to the doctors and the nurses, they never gave us the right information of what had really happened that night. But it is apparent that uh, there must have been some problem because we were told that there was no enough blood in the blood bank. We will continue airing as, as we go around the hospital, but we can only take the video from outside. Thank you. I wanted to take this video within the hospital compound, but it is not possible due to various reasons, the privacy of the hospital. And of course, uh, the guards would not allow me because of the sensitive information that surrounds hospitals, especially government hospitals in Kenya. 
This hospital was built 50 years ago, that is five decades. The launch was done by the late former Nyandarwa Northern MP, Mr. Josiah Mwangi Karioki, and that is why the hospital is named after him. Now, there are things that we need to address as residents of our Kalau because so many people have lost their lives here in this hospital due to negligence, due to bed capacity. But this hospital cannot admit the number of patients that are supposed to be admitted because the bed capacity here is 220. The county government's priority looks uh, lopsided. It's up, upside down, actually, because when you look at the way things are done, you really sympathize with the situation. This hospital is meant to be for the poor people, people who may not be able to afford to go to private hospitals. And of course, they are the majority in this country. So uh, when you look at the priorities, you realize, number one, instead of increasing the bed capacity, increasing the infrastructure, what uh, the county government actually does is that it has built a bigger mortuary. So basically, if you look at that priority, you are expanding the mortuary, uh, preservation of dead bodies is done instead of increasing the bed capacity, increasing the infrastructure, making sure that we have all the facilities in the hospital, and ensuring that patients can be served within the shortest period of time. This year, in mid-June, we lost several patients due to lack of blood. So basically, blood was not available, and uh, when I came to this hospital to talk about that situation, uh, the explanation was not satisfactory, because you, uh, you could not understand how they could admit women to labor wards without blood. So they could not really explain to us how the blood was lacking and how they could admit women in the hospital when there was blood shortage.